In January of 2020, the world completely changed. 2020 is now the deadliest year in U.S. history. School shut down, work went remote, shopping in person became a risk. A wild world of short video content. 11 months later, TikTok became the most downloaded app in the world. Over a billion people spending their time in this new world, scrolling, consuming. President Biden today leading an urgent push on COVID relief. Three months after that, President Joe Biden passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. All of this creating the perfect storm for a small town Wisconsin kid and his girlfriend to build a million dollar sneaker empire. All right, Hayden, introduce yourself to the people. My name's Hayden. I'm one of the largest TikTok resellers in the world. How much money do you make every year? $1.2 million per year, man. All on TikTok? All on TikTok. So yeah. what does the business actually look like? We post a bunch of content and then we hop on live for about two to three hours a day. Um, and then it slowly picks up every time we go live. We just get more and more people in there. They get to ask to see specific shoes. They love to see our orders being packaged on live. People love to order on live and watch it being packaged you on pack live. the orders on Yeah, if we, have, if we have time, we, okay. we, we always love it. Everyone loves it. And then next day shipping too. People love us for next day shipping. Once we package it on live at night, it's out in the morning. So how many orders will you do on like a one specific live? Uh, I would say on average, uh, it depends per day obviously, but I would say average uh, 20 to 30 orders alive. So what separates you from much of other resellers? The biggest thing that separates us is our customer relationship. We build rapport with our customers. We care about our customers. Even though we get a lot of sales, mm -hmm. we, we take the time and we invest our time into building a relationship, mm -hmm. a long lasting one, where we can probably say our return to customer, it's over 60%. It's crazy. We have a large following base, almost 300,000. I would confidently say 80% were contributed by lives and they follow us through lives. Wow. So most of the followers are coming from the lives. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. It didn't happen overnight though. We've been doing this, like I said, for four years straight. We were running it just a low key account and then we really, took off once my girlfriend started um, managing it. She's coming from an industry, thrifting and clothes, where um, that type of thing was already being done. And she was simply able to kind of relate it to sneakers and put it in the sneaker space. She actually came up with doing it fly kicks together. But we were on like a like a stereotypical hike and she she stopped and like, what if we do this together? What type of customer are you actually selling to? Moms. My, moms wow. who Moms love to shop. They have some disposable income as well as they can buy for their husbands and their kids. Moms? Yep. Really? Yep. So you're on TikTok Live and it's just a bunch of moms. You'd be surprised on the amount of uh, older age people on TikTok. And so 30% margin, that's pretty impressive. How are you guys pricing these shoes? We like to say it's a mix of market price and supply and demand. Because we don't have a, a 30,000 uh, pair warehouse, we have to uh, we don't have as much inventory, so we price it because it, we know it sells out a day of us posting it. So we have to price it pretty competitively so the person who wants it the most will get it. However, I do want to kind of shift into a more um, affordable and uh, have a wide variety of shoes where uh, customers will be even more happy to be able to shop with us. So right now, like let's say a shoe goes for $120 on StockX. Yeah. That's the ask. Maybe after everything it's $150, how much would you sell for? We would sell it from $150 to $180. I like to price uh, either matching after fees on apps or up to $30 more just because uh, I try to stay a little bit competitive, but if I give more value, I yeah. think I could add a little bit more. To it's the getting price. shipped out next day. So yeah. that's like a big one. Plus they know where it's coming from versus like StockX Goat, they don't necessarily know. We have a face to the business. Yeah. Uh, they see it. It's a personalized shopping experience. That's what I like to say. Yeah, so you're selling for $20, $30 over StockX ask plus fees. Yeah. Do your customers know they can get it for cheaper on StockX? I would say a majority do. It's not like we're, uh, taking advantage of uh, the information, the information gap. It's really, they truly believe in the value that they're being provided and they're willing to pay it. Hmm. SAS sneakers as a service. Yeah. That's what it is. The way I see it right now with market being down, I think it's wiping out a lot of the smaller resellers who don't really know what they're doing. And it's really consolidating the market where there's going to be just a few really big players and then all the small guys are kind of getting wiped out. Do you see the same thing happening with the market? Absolutely. The past six to a year, I've seen more people liquidate and exit more than I've ever seen it in the past. It's not scary. Actually, I see it as the opposite. I see it as it's a confidence builder, as seeing people 
are trying to get out of the game, that just gives me and everyone else still in it more opportunity. Yeah, so do you want to do sneakers forever? This is like your, your long term? Ideally, yes. This is a true passion. This is long term for me. Mm -hmm. And you're in college right now, right? Yep. One semester left. My girlfriend has one year left, and we're still, uh, still being able to manage it all with this. That's crazy. How do you balance school and then running a business that's making thirty thousand dollars profit per month? It's very difficult. It's usually when we're not in school, we're working, and vice versa. Why? Why stay in school? College was worth it. Um, I was able to slowly grow the business and learn the long and hard way. Uh, being able to be in school kind of separated time, so it was more of a slow growth where I'm able to learn the good things, learn the bad things about a business, and especially mine. Yeah, I think that's very important is just controlled growth. Yeah. You don't want to grow too quick exactly. and then realize you're, you're screwed and you have one bad month and yeah. it all falls apart. Um, tell me more about the progression. So how did you start on TikTok? And how did you get to where you are today? It was, a, it was a true passion project. Like we went in with no expectations. We went in actually just thinking this was a hobby. Like, uh, let's see what we can do with this. And slowly and slowly, it just started building out and it just came so natural where we're at now. Hayden, it sounds like a almost too perfect of a journey. Has there any, ever been anything bad that's happened? Like the biggest lowest point was last summer. We have our store, like I said, and we live about like 40 minutes away from the store. So um, living at home for the summer, we had a commute, um, not every day, but it was many times a week and it got really exhausting. And then our live stream feature was just very, uh, I think it was shadow banned and we were just reaching like very minimal people. We were really questioning whether we should keep doing this because we didn't know if it was going to bounce back or not. Do you think that's the main risk is that it's just a single sales channel? Absolutely. It could get shut down by TikTok at any point. This sounds super hypocritical because for the past four years, I've almost been leveraging all my time and everything into one sales channel. I'm a huge advocate for being able to diversify. And I've slowly learned that within the past few months of like trying to build something out where I don't have to depend on that. Mm -hmm. It's very scary, like having to rely on one, and I would not recommend it. I mean, we see that with Amazon now. Yeah. All these accounts are getting like. Section three is getting shut down, deactivated. More than ever. Yeah, it's scary. Do you ever deal with fakes from these sellers? Uh, occasionally, uh, once in a blue moon, but I've really, uh, that's the reason why I do go to these people. They're very trustworthy. They've been doing this for a while and I can trust them the most uh, for these things. Mm -hmm. But as far as everything over $500, I try to aim, uh, I do check checks just to give extra confirmation for the customers knowing that if they're spending that much, um, they're good. All right, so live streams, right? Yep. I feel like it's this reputation where people are getting on, and uh, if you're watching this, I love you. This is not a jab. Um, people get on these live streams and they're like, this is the shoe, this is the shoe, this is the shoe, buy the shoe, buy the shoe, buy the shoe. Is that how you do it? I would describe our lives as more of a Q&A and being able to, just like a FaceTime with customers. Mm. Uh, Cindy actually uh, refers to it as a FaceTime with customers, and that's a great way of describing it. You hop on, get to chat with a lot of the returning people, and then also get new people in there. They ask questions, uh, we answer them. If they want to see a shoe, we'll show it off. Um, and then there's enough comments where people ask where to buy, then we direct them to our website, but it's never shop, shop, shop. It's more about people ask, then we tell them. How many times are you going live a week? Every other day, um, if not hopefully, yeah, four to five times a week. It is very, very taxing. Uh, very exhausting um, on the, the body and mind. You really have to go in with the right mindset, um, being able to entertain a bunch of viewers at a time. So uh, the, the only holdback is just uh, being able to just mentally do it. How many hours at a time? Uh, I would typically say two minimum, up to four hours, no more than that. It just all based on how the live goes. So if we're really crammed, uh, we're gonna stay on. If it's really popping, we'll stay on. But if it's a low-key chill one, we'll get what we need to get done and then we'll be off in an hour or two. How do you get back to where you are today? Showing up, uh, there's no turning point. It was, just con it was just consistently showing up even if I didn't get it. So luckily within, I would say, it was four months of being shadow banned and getting very minimal views. It's a long time. Yeah, on lives and uh, posts were all shadow banned and those four months were very rough, but we kept showing up. And luckily, it just turned back. Uh, it started picking up 
more and more and we started getting a bit more motivated once we saw that. When you're on your downsides and your, your lowest points, you think of things that you'll never think of when you're doing well and that kind of took us out of the box and we started implementing um, higher quality content. We started interacting with people more on lives. We thought we were doing well, but we started doing it more. We ended up even, incre we even bought a, a premium Wi-Fi router. Um, we were on like the base version, so we try to even boost our internet connection. Try everything, yeah. And surprisingly, the internet connection within a week of us putting, paying two times the amount, it, it went back. Really? I, I'm not gonna say it's because of that, but both of us are convinced. We we pay like forty dollars a month for a Wi-Fi router. We paid ninety now, and it it almost happened instantly. So maybe that was a down thing. Like we never know, yeah. but that might be it. So Hayden, I know as well. Social media is a long grind. It's tough. Yeah. Seeing the numbers go up and down, you make a video that you think is gonna hit, and then it gets like zero views. Yeah. Talk about your social media growth. How do you get your first thousand followers? And then how do you get your first hundred thousand? Kind of crazy. It was the first summer of us doing it. It probably took us three, three months to go from a thousand to a hundred thousand. Yeah. From a thousand to a hundred thousand in yeah. six months. How, yeah. how about zero to one thousand? Zero, one thousand, six months. Wow. We, and that six months is a, that's tough, right? Because you're, you're not getting reinforced by the... We had two shelves, literally two shelves of inventory, and we were selling the that, same... Yeah, that amount of shoes, and we were selling the same amount of the amount of inventory we have now compared to then. It was a wild time. Like I said, COVID, um, we really um, took advantage of that opportunity. The biggest exponential growth we've ever had, and nothing will be like that ever again. Um, but I'm glad we capitalized on that. Now it's just been slow growth, um, week on week, month on month. So when you first started on TikTok, was it just like the passion product that you talked about just making content or yeah. were you like, okay, I wanna get customers, I wanna make this a business? Couldn't be farther from the truth. It was truly just a passion, really? posting what you want. We, If you look at our old content, it is truly just, you will believe me when I say we just posted like the most random sneaker content. The last thing I'm on our minds was how can we get customers from this? I never enjoyed making content really. Like it's always just been the content helps the business. So I got to make the content. Yeah. It's never been like help on it. <laughs> like I really like, <laughs> I hate this shit. You know? No, I, I get it. Social media is tough. They think it's all sunshines and rainbows, but it is a long grind. I wouldn't recommend if anyone was thinking about it. It is a tough yeah. business. It's a very tough business. So when did you guys realize that TikTok can actually make you guys money selling shoes? Right away. Once we started doing lives, I was actually on vacation in Arizona when Sydney's first live uh, blew up. I'm out for dinner and I get back from dinner and we have like 50 orders on Shopify. And I'm, I'm like, Sydney, what's going on? And she said like, live, live. I was so overwhelmed because at that time, like I said, we only had like a shelf of inventory. So we basically got cleared out. The next day I'm having to like buy shoes and get them sent out to her so she can replant as yeah. fast as possible. It was a stressful vacation, but like it's a memory that I will never forget. But within like the, the first two months of us, us having a website, we were doing 50K on uh, a month just on Shopify. Well, social media and sneaker reseller. That's like the combination that people hate the most. <laughs> Um, do, you do, deal, <laughs> do you deal with any like hate on the internet and how do you manage that? For the amount of um, reach we get, I would like, we get zero to none. It is truly like, but once we do like, we like, ah, oh, dang, but we get it once in a blue moon. Our community is priceless. I would say our community that we built are, is the most valuable thing that we have in our business. Uh, so compared to everything, we probably get one of the, the least amount of hate uh, for being resellers and being on social media. That's fascinating. There's gonna be some comments in this one, I'll bet you in this. Why sneakers specifically? Sneakers, it's just a way of life for me. Uh, shoes are kind of a unique thing where people uh, gain some sort of confidence and it kind of, you can build a personality around it. You, that's something that I haven't heard a lot, but a lot of customers have told me that they feel a different way wearing a new pair of sneakers. Mm -hmm. But purely just from a business standpoint, yeah. don't you think you'd be better off in another category? Yeah, uh, people are always skeptical about 
uh, sneakers and the downfall of it. Uh, resellers are used to the COVID era where everything was just too easy. You could just flip something for $50 yeah. any, anywhere, any place. But it's if you're looking at a long-term thing, it could uh, it could really open up a new possibility of being the largest in the game, where nobody's really taking it seriously, nobody's thinking the the longevity of it, and it's just uh, not thinking quick money. But if you can build something out now and retain all this uh, large customer base, uh, I see it uh, as something that's going to make an upturn and something that can be really sustainable.